Oof, this week has finally come to an end. We have been seeing so many different announcements this entire week. Microsoft started with the build conference. There were so many different announcements, especially in terms of the announcement with the AI improvement. And GitHub introduced their GitHub Copilot improvement, GitHub Copilot code improvement, which was even more amazing. And there were even more supports and features released in this week. And then Google announced the new Gemini improved models with the Gemini 2.5 Pro model. And then finally, yesterday, Cloud announced the Cloud Sonnet 4 model and Opus model, which were all pretty amazing. This entire week was quite shivering because so many different announcements were happening. And finally, this week has come to an end. I know there are going to be a lot more improvements coming on this entire year. And this entire thing is going to keep on cumulatively increase every year for sure. But as I said, today in this video, we are going to talk about the MCP database server and you are going to be seeing the entire improvement and the power of the model context protocol with our MCP database server. If you remember a couple of weeks before I was talking about this model context protocol database server, which has the support for multiple different databases. It can be SQLite, SQL Server, Postgres database, and also we have got this entire homepage, which will tell you how you can configure everything from the complete ground up. And these are the setup guide for the SQLite, Postgres SQLs, and how you can use it and things of that nature. And I also told that this MCP server can connect with any of the agents which has the support for MCP, for instance, the uh, GitHub Copilot or the Cursor IDE client or even Warp terminals. You can just use in any of these and you can start working from there. Well, as I said, in this video, I'm going to be addressing one of the most common questions which has been asked in my last video is, whether this MCP server that we have got over here supports the complex database structure. And I took that as a challenge. I really want to show you that that's also been supported with our model context protocol that we have built over here. And I will quickly show you what I really mean about that. So if I want to show you a quick database diagram, which is something like this, as you can see over here, this is the database structure. It is a bit of a complex database structure for sure. And I will show you what are the different commands that we can play around with this one. You see that this is an employee uh, table. And this particular employee table has got a lot of different, uh, the relationship with the different tables, like the address table and the awards table, loans table, roles table, uh, and then salary details table and work history table. See that this employee can have multiple different addresses. He can also be working with multiple different companies before, and he can have multiple different salary in every company. And he might have played different role in multiple different uh, companies, or maybe in the same company, he might have uh, having different roles to play uh, during the course of time. And he might have different home loans or car loans or whatever. And then he might have got multiple different awards. So this is the database structure that we have got. And we are going to query all these things in the cloud desktop and I will show you how you can connect the MCB database server and work with this kind of complex database structure and ask the question in natural language and you will see how amazing the cloud Sonnet 4 is going to perform because now it has got the power of the uh, tooling support even better and also had got a longer context window and also it has got the support for the code in built which means it can translate the natural uh, language into quite much much easily so everything has been improved the uh, in the cloud sonnet 4 and i will show you everything in this particular video that's it set let's jump into the cloud desktop 4 right now all right so now i'm in the cloud desktop and as you can see that the cloud 4 is here this is the message which i'm getting in which is amazing so i'm going to just do a try cloud 4 uh, and you can see that they have got the cloud sonnet 4 and the cloud opus 4 uh, opus 4 is only something which is available in the pro version which i don't really have the subscription so i'm just going to leave that guy as it is and you can also see that i have configured my postgres sql database which is already connected with my database well speaking about the database i'll quickly show you how the database is going to look like in a, an actual uh, ui view so this is the employee management database that i have got and this is the tables that I have got over here. You see that this is the employee uh, tables. Uh, and if I just go select the top thousand rows, you can see all the employees that I have got. And then this employee has got addresses. So if I just gonna select the addresses over there, uh, you should see all the address of this particular employee. And if I just go select the uh, awards, these are the awards that he has got over here. 
And if I want to see the loans that he has got, and you can see the loans that he has got over here. And if I try to select the uh, work history, this is the work history this particular employees have got, right? So this is the, this is definitely a complex database table, and it has got a lot of different relationships, which I really wanted to show you, like how the uh, cloud desktop is gonna handle them all so easily. Well, as I said, I'm gonna go over here, and I'm gonna say, uh, can you uh, query the table and get me the details of an employee? Uh, maybe first employee, something like that, right? So you see that now we know what is going to happen. This is going to, like the cloud uh, desktop is going to go and uh, call the tools, which is going to be uh, the PostgreSQL tool that we have configured, which is the um, uh, MCB database server. And you see that now it is going to go and describe the table. Now it's getting all the details of the employees. There we go. And now it's going to go uh, grab the detail of the first employee, as you can see. And it's giving me that this is the uh, John Smith, which is amazing. And now what I'm going to do is, uh, now we have got this information over here with just the plain English text. We have got all the informations. Now I'm going to say, uh, can you uh, check how many uh, companies he has worked before? See, I'm just going to ask in a natural language in here, like I'm just interacting with a person. And you see that now all the queries are going to be written for me over here. Now see the complex queries are starting to pour in. And the AI, which is the cloud desktop model, uh, is going to do everything for me. And you see that it's giving me the information that based on the work history record, John Smith has worked three companies before joining his current company. And these are the information. Look at that. Now I'm, I'm actually querying everything as if like I'm talking to somebody and not even querying any database as such. But behind the scene, you see that what query is being written over here. This is mind blowing. And I have not really written any of these things even in my tool. It's all been handled by the AI for me uh, over there. All right, so now I'm gonna go maybe a level further. So I got the companies that he have worked with uh, in, in this period. I want to see how much his salary hike has improved during this period of time. Uh, can you check how much is his salary growth happened during uh, his company hop? So he's hopping one company to another. I want to see how much is the salary change happening during this period of time. So now you see that this particular uh, cloud desktop is going to go and call the describe table of the salary details table. And it is getting me all the informations over there. And look at that. Now it's telling me that starting salary in 2020, uh, John has got uh, like a 120,000 as the base salary. Total compensation was this one. And in the first year review in 2021, his salary just increased to 14.8 percentage, which is amazing. And in the second year review, he got a 12.9 percentage increase in 2021. So overall growth at the current company, he has got this much over there, which is amazing. So within this company, he has got all this information. I mean, this is just within the same company because unfortunately the database doesn't contain the salary information from his previous company, which is these three company. So he cannot calculate that. Now I'm gonna see whether he has got any loan or anything like that. Uh, does he has any, uh, any loan? So I'm gonna ask that and he's gonna go and check the loan table and it's gonna get me that information for the loan. Look at that. So it's gonna go query and let's see what's gonna happen. There we go. So John has got one active loan, which is this one, and his loan is progressing. Uh, so, so far he has paid around this much. So he's in his third year of his 15 year loan term. So I'm gonna say, based on his skill set, based on his uh, salary growth, maybe, uh, salary growth, do you want to project how much, how quickly he can pay off his loan uh, over here? So I'm asking a projection over here. So this is way beyond uh, what we have 
available in this particular code. So now the AI is going to kick in, it's going to analyze the data. So you see that it's going to put all those information there. So it's writing some, uh, some code basically in the uh, JavaScript. And now you see that now it's doing a projection, uh, this growth of his salary, how quickly he can, he can pay the loan amount. And you see that this is the analysis data and there is going to be another analysis happening over here behind the scene for me. Uh, it's writing every of these information uh, and we are going to get a projection. So let's see what is going to be the output over there. And you can see that in the third analysis of the data, it has found that there is a financial impact uh, summary. So original schedule was 15 years ending 2036, uh, but the accelerated payoff is approximately 10 years uh, total. So you saved approximately five years. So this is what is the analysis that it has come up with. You see that now it has put a breakdown of how the salary has been, um, uh, how his salary is impacting the amount of loan that he is paying off uh, during this particular period of time. And based on that, it is projecting that how much salary, uh, how much uh, amount that it can uh, pay off during the same period. Uh, and now based on that, this is the salary growth. You see that the current pattern uh, is 13.9 percentage average annual growth and uh, in 14.8 percentage uh, of salary in 2021 and 12.9 in 2022, uh, which means uh, his salaries keep on increasing or maybe projected in 2025, salary is going to be this one and projected in 2028, salary is going to be this one. I'm 100% sure with all these AI, the salary projection is going to keep on reducing than what it's been projecting here, like a higher level salary, uh, which I think is going to be negative for us. But let's see what's going to happen there. Uh, but for now, for, at least for this guy, AI is very optimistic. It says that the remaining balance is going to be uh, 450000 and the current payment is this one and the interest is this and the original payoff date is this. Uh, with the accelerated payoff scenario, he's going to complete this in 2029 and seven years early. And scenario two with the aggressive uh, acceleration of 75% increase in salary, he will be completing very quickly and he'll be saving around eight to nine years uh, early. Uh, and this is the insight that it has got. Uh, this is the financial uh, impact and this is the recommendation. So by 2029, this guy is going to be mortgage free, which is amazing. Uh, it's a dream for me. So you see that this is how you can use the model context protocol for the database. And then you can also ask questions in a natural language and you get all the responses back, which is amazing. And you can do all the projections and all those details, which is, uh, which is far beyond from our tool. It's all going to be taken care by the cloud for you with the power of Cloud Sonnet 4. And as you see, the power of Cloud Sonnet 4, this is going way beyond. It is doing a lot more different calculation before it just gives you some normal math calculation. It is writing a lot of different code behind the scene. That is the power of the coding uh, tool which is embedded right now along with the Cloud Sonnet 4. That's the reason why it is doing all these calculations for you over here. And now that is the reason why it is coming up with the not the approximate result but the accurate result as much as possible. Mind blowing. Once again, thank you so much for watching this videos guys. Please let me know what you think about and I'm recommending you to please use the model contest protocol database server from user automation. It's amazing. It's going to save a ton of time for you. Catch you in the next one.